Yesterday in class, we discussed continental drift and seafloor spreading. Today, we're going to look at exactly how plates move and what happens when plates move in certain directions. This is called tectonic plate boundaries, where plates collide. There are three types of plate boundaries, transform boundaries, divergent boundaries, and convergent boundaries. A transform boundary is when two plates scrape past each other in opposite directions. So this is going to be, if you were to put your hands together and move them back and forth, this is an example of a transform boundary. Second is a divergent boundary. This is when plates move apart. So if you have two plates that are together, they're going to separate and move away from each other, divide. The third type is a convergent boundary. This is when plates move together. So you have two plates and they're going to push at each other. So let's, I'll make it more flat so it makes more sense. When the two plates push together, they're either going to push up, that looks like a mountain, or sometimes one plate will go underneath another. And we'll talk about what that will create as well, but they're going to go toward each other, converge. This is a good picture illustration of each type of boundary. When um, you get to your foldable at the end of class today, you are going to have to draw pictures and you might want to come back to this slide because these are really good illustrations. So what you can see is up here on the transform boundary, you have the two arrows sliding past each other, your divergent boundary, they're moving away from each other, and then your convergent boundary, they're moving toward each other. Every part of the world is on a plate, whether it's in the ocean or it's on land. So this is an illustration showing every single plate that is on Earth. As you can see, some of the plates are larger than the continent that they are surrounding, so that means they go underwater as well. So what I want you to do is if you look at this picture, there are arrows showing you the different types of boundaries. So since these arrows are pointing toward each other, that means they are going together so that is a convergent boundary. If you look over here at the Pacific Plate and Nazca Plate, here are two arrows going away from each other. So once again, when they move apart, they're dividing. So we call that a divergent boundary. And then there is a transform boundary. Usually, well, it's not really showing it in this picture, but along South America Plate, there is a transform boundary. And we'll look at some more examples of those here in a minute. Now we're going to look at some real world examples of landforms that are created at different boundaries. So this one is actually in the United States along California. Some of you may have heard of this before. This is San Andreas Fault. Usually if you hear the word fault, it is a transform boundary which means earthquakes can occur. So if you look at this, you can see that what has happened over time, this fault line has been created because of the two plates rubbing together. This is a picture of the same fault, just um, a sky view from farther away. So here once again is your San Andreas fault. And then these are all the different things that have been created because of this one fault line. So there's drainage, um, there's a new drain that is actually being used and it's created a creek along this area because of how much the land has shifted. Okay, here is an example of a divergent boundary, a real world example. This is the Great Rift Valley in Africa. So you can look over here at the picture and it's kind of showing you the areas that have moved over time and that since it's divergent, remember they've separated, so that's why it's created a valley in the middle of the land. Okay, here are the Himalaya Mountains, and I didn't put on here what type of boundary because I want you to think about it. If a mountain was created, what do you think has to, had to have happened for that boundary to have been um, pushed together. You know pushed together means convergent, so yes it was a convergent boundary to create the Himalayan mountains. And then here's a real world picture for you to see. Think about if the land was flat at one time how much movement those plates had to have had to create these mountains. Okay, this picture wants you to actually look at the example lines, the arrows, of the different boundaries and try to find the three that we just talked about. So let's think back to the first one, the San Andreas Fault. We know that San Andreas Fault is a transform boundary and we know it is on the North American plate because it's in the United States. So if you look on this picture, you should be able to find two arrows going side by side because it's rubbing past each other along the North American plate. See if you can find it. Okay, it is right here where the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate meet. You can see the two arrows moving side by side. 
All right, next I want you to try to find where the Great Rift Valley is. Remember that it was on the border of Africa. And if it's a valley, that means that the plates have pulled apart. So you need to look at two arrows going away from each other. See if you can find it. Okay, it's up here along this border of the African and Arabian plate. And the last one, let's see if you can find the Himalayan mountains. Remember that they were in India, so possibly on the Indian plate. And if it's a mountain, that means that the plates are moving toward each other. So see if you can find two arrows pointing at each other for the um, convergent boundary. Okay. Here it is, the Indian plate meets the Eurasian plate. That's where the Himalayan mountains are, good. Okay, just a reminder from what we've done Monday through yesterday, we talked about there are two types of plates, the continental and the oceanic. And um, when continental and oceanic react with each other on plate boundaries, different things can occur. So at times it can be two continental crusts meeting or separating or moving side by side. Sometimes it can be two oceanic and sometimes it can be continental and oceanic. So we're going to look at exactly what happens when it's different forms uh, moving against or apart from each other. Okay, so let's talk about the exact landforms that are formed at each boundary depending if it's continental hitting continental, continental and oceanic reacting, or two oceanic plates. So first is convergent. When there is a convergent boundary and it is two continental plates meeting, that means it's land hitting land, then a mountain is created. Now volcanoes are created when it is closer to water. So anytime you have continental crust hitting oceanic crust, a volcano will be formed. And that is also true if it's oceanic to oceanic. We kind of discussed this yesterday. It's because the magma is closer to the surface when it is um, the oceanic crust because it's so much thinner than the continental crust. So since that magma is closer to the surface, then it can create a volcano. And this is also how islands are created in the middle of the ocean. Once these two, these layers keep pushing on each other and that magma cools and it keeps building that's how an island can be created all right the second one is divergent so some examples are valleys lakes and trenches lakes is something that occurs over time um, because it has to be larger than what a valley normally is and it usually is near a water source so valleys lake and trenches can happen when it's continental to continental and when it's oceanic crust coming away from oceanic crust. So there are valleys and trenches within the ocean. Um, also with divergent boundaries, there can be volcanoes created because when those layers pull apart, you can have, um, it pulls up on the sides, and then if it's near the water, that magma can come up and create a volcano as well. The last one is transform. A uh, for the transform boundaries, if it's continental and continental rubbing against each other, that's when earthquakes are created. If you kind of, like I showed you earlier, do your hands together, your hands can kind of stick on your knuckles. That's exactly what happens in a transform boundary. Those pieces stick together and then when they shift, it causes the earth to move so much, that's why it is an earthquake. And then um, tsunamis is when it's oceanic to oceanic and continental to, con or continental to oceanic. And this is because water is involved and an underwater earthquake is a tsunami. So anytime that happens that water is involved, it does create a tsunami. And like when it's continental to oceanic, that's when it gets even more dangerous because it's so close to the land and that creates the tsunami with the earthquakes all in one, which is, like I said, very dangerous. Okay, and I really like this picture for an example. So if you look up here at the top, it goes through and shows you the different types of plate boundaries. And then here it shows you what is created at those boundaries because of the oceanic to oceanic or continental to oceanic or continental to continental. So it shows the arrows and everything. And what I really like is it shows you the asthenosphere and the lithosphere. And you can see that the lithosphere is where all these plates are moving on. So that's the most important layer that create these plate boundaries. So if we look here, convergent plate boundary in the ocean, we have a volcano. Transform boundary in the ocean, and that would have created a tsunami. And you can kind of see this split here. A divergent boundary in the ocean, it shows um, seafloor spreading. It creates a ridge. Sometimes you might hear that um, called a trench as well. We, here we have a convergent boundary, trench. And then over here on the side, um, it shows a, it says it's a young plate boundary. So it's something that hasn't really 
um, started moving too much yet, but it is transform if you look and it's starting to, or not transform, I'm sorry, divergent. And so it's starting to pull the plates away from each other and you can kind of see the separation of land. It almost looks like there's water in the back to show you the, uh, like a lake could form there. Right here, what I want to talk about, if you look at this oceanic crust, you can see that it's moving underneath the continental crust. This is called subduction. That is because the oceanic crust is less dense, we've talked about density before, than continental crust. So at times, the oceanic crust will be pushed under, and that's what helps pushes that magma up to the land. So you can see that there's a volcano created in this line here, and it's because of this subduction zone. Okay, so here are your instructions for your foldable. Now I'll let you work with your butterfly group, the group that I put you in on Monday. This is what must be included, and I'm going to show you how to fold it and everything in just a minute. So first you must draw a picture of each boundary. Do not make this harder than it needs to be. I know you guys like to do that sometimes. Just draw squares with arrows. Okay, so you can have two squares and then arrows pointing at each other, two squares, arrows pointing away from each other, or two squares and one pointing up and the other one pointing down. Don't make this hard. I'm not, uh, I don't expect you to draw the ocean and things like that. Just mainly illustrate how they work. Are they going together, apart, or side by side? Then I want you to explain how they move. So basically you're going to explain that picture. They pull apart, they move toward each other, they slide past each other. I want you to tell me examples of landforms created near the type of boundary. So is it a mountain, is it a valley, is it a volcano? And then lastly, I want you to give me a real world example. I do not want this to be the example that's in the PowerPoint. So this is one that you're going to have to go to Google and research. Try to find an example of each boundary, but not one of the ones that I listed in the PowerPoint. Okay, so this is how you're going to make your foldable. You have done these often. It's the three-door foldable. I want you to fold your paper in half hamburger style. Over here, once you get it folded, you're going to cut two slits to make three doors. Now remember, if you cut both pieces of paper, it doesn't work. You only want to cut through that one side of paper. What I would like for you to do is up at the top, oops, sorry, shouldn't be moving that around. Up at the top, write plate boundaries so that you know that's what these are called. You'll need a convergent door, a divergent door, and a transform door. And then this is what I want it to look like on the inside. Up on the top of your flap, so the flap that you wrote convergent on one side, when you fold it over, I want you to draw your pictures. So this is where you'll put your squares with the arrows. Then down here, I want incomplete sentences. How do they move? So you'll say, convergent boundaries move toward each other. Tell me what landforms they can cause. They can cause mountains. They can cause valleys. I'm not giving you the right answers here. You need to go back and look it up and then give me a real world example. You will do that three times because you will do it for divergent and transform as well. I don't care what order you put these in as long as you get it done. And then last, here's the back. I do want your name, date, and period, and then you will turn this into the basket when you get